understanding and revelation through the spirit lord it's not um through my understanding lord but through through truth and knowledge lord uh and wisdom from the spirit lord so we just ask you lord to open up your word lord we just take the bread of your word right now and we break it open right now in jesus name but father god you would bring forth that hidden manner and lord impart it into the hearers lord that they would have understanding lord and edification lord through your word that father that your your word would take root and lord it would fall in that ground that good ground lord, and take root and grow into that uh tree that bears for much fruit lord and we just ask father god for the hearers to hear uh the word that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word lord that it would bring correction to uh, all of us lord in jesus name that we become more aware um, about the power of our words lord in jesus name amen okay can you all see that hello yes peter i can see it just fine beautiful okay all right so um right so we're just just a bit of an intro here on um the teaching the teaching is about vows uh and oaths um swearing um uh upon um our words uh or whatever it be um so the reason this teaching came about was obviously it's a it's an integral part of our understanding and relationship uh with christ to to understand that our words what we say have power but particularly with our vows um the devil will will use them against us uh if we're not um mindful of uh what we're saying uh, because satan is a legalist and um the bible even says that you know jesus said that we will give an account for every idle word so you know with deliverance one thing we've noticed i mean obviously deliverance is very powerful um when the person being delivered uh, needs to renounce certain oaths, um, vows, pledges, um, covenants that they made or their ancestors have made for that matter, you believe in the ancestors. So um, the, the devil has used this to snare us. And you can probably see in the picture there, you know, our tongue can become a snare to our, uh, us. And uh, um, Proverbs 17 verse 28 says, even a fool when he holds his peace is counted wise, and he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You know, a tongue just gets us into so much trouble, doesn't it? It really does um, paint a picture of us. You know, a tongue is sort of like, a paintbrush in a way isn't it like painting a picture of us personally of our lives and and out of the abundance of the heart you know our tongue paints the on this canvas for everyone to see uh <laughs> hopefully it will be a a, a work of art otherwise it's going to turn into a lot of scribble <laughs> might even look like a bit of graffiti on you know on a wall um so hence the scripture you know it's better to keep our mouth shut than paint a picture that just basically um, um, condemns us and brings uh brings um you know condemnation to us and uh the snare of the devil because the devil's going to take up those words that we speak and he's going to uh 
use them against us. Only I know the number of times I've said things, and man, the Holy Spirit's just jumped on me. Holy Spirit's just come through and convicted me, man. I've just had to stop halfway through a sentence and say, Lord, I repent, I renounce those words, and I cover them with the blood. Amen. Because um, you know, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is um our teacher. He guides and leads us, and we've got to listen to him. He's he's uh He's there censoring every word that we speak, you know. So, you know, praise God now for the ministry of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit now, uh, it's sort of like he's our proofreader. <laughs> if I could say that, use that term. He proofs everything we say. So it's so important to just think before we talk, you know. Uh, how is this going to edify the person? And that comes with wisdom. Uh, we have knowledge, understanding, and that brings wisdom. So uh, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, and he brings uh, correction over us for those idle words that we can renounce them. So if you do say anything, be quick to uh, ask forgiveness, renounce it, ask God's forgiveness, and cover it with the blood that the devil won't use it against us. All right? So Matthew 12, verse 33 either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt for the tree is known by its fruit O generation of vipers how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You know, and this, this is uh, so evident with um, our lives, isn't it? The devil will come in and use those idle words um, to incriminate us, um, to torment us, um, and uh, try to snare us. And, um, you know, the devil's out to steal our inheritance. And, uh, you know, uh, idle words, you know, idle words, you know, they're dangerous and, uh, you know, they're, there's something that lacks wisdom. You know, idle words can lack wisdom. So we have to, you know, constantly be um, uh, aware of our words uh, edifying, you know, not just people around us, but God, ourselves. Um, and um, the devil will grab those words, man, and uh, he's got a legal right to uh, torment us. I know in my life so many times, man, I, I said something one day and it was like that the fire of hell came on me and it was like I was having my head dipped into torment, you know, um, literally for about 10, 10 hours until uh, I was up at two o'clock in the morning and God showed me what I'd said. I'd basically given the enemy a hook, you know, into a, a, a portal into me. Uh, where this other person was, uh, demons were allowed to attack me. And uh, I, when the Lord told me what I'd done, he just, I renounced it, shut that door, and it, the torment just left just like that. It was gone. It was incredible. And it was, um, man, and that really taught me how careful we have to be with our words, okay? Um, uh, they'll open doors. And, and you know, the, the gates of hell, you know, what, what, what our tongue does is it can open the gates of hell. And Bible says that the Jesus said, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Well, one thing I've learned uh, through deliverance and particularly with the spiritual prisons where, where we made vows and oaths and things where they've opened doors um, to the, to the, to Hades. You know, we did a deliverance just recently where, you know, breaking the curse of the leech and uh, the the when we went through that part where it talks about the open grave, you know, there's three things, uh, 
and it actually then says four. The fourth being uh, the fire that never says enough. But the one of the things is the open grave. One of the three things is the open grave. You know, the open grave is there. It's the gates of hell. Basically, the gates of Hades are open in a particular area of our life. It's not spiritually. I'm talking about your soul, an area of your soul, not your spirit. Your spirit's seated with heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But, you know, the devil can be there tormenting us. If you don't believe me and you think that that's not true, have a look at most Christians' lives. A lot of them, and if they're being tormented in one particular area, I mean, the devil's got a hook there. And uh, it's for us to to get ministry and to overcome that area. And, and that only comes through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal what it is, okay, and close that door. And one of those doors is was the, the open grave. Man, when we shut the open grave in that sister, you should, should have heard the demons screaming uh, because they had they literally were losing a whole area of um, the work they'd done was just literally going up in smoke. <laughs> and uh, that sister's testimony after that was powerful, right? Completely changed her, her life. All right, so um yeah so our words can open doors open doors to the kingdom of god or open doors to the kingdom of darkness um bring all kinds of uh, stuff into our life you know so we've got to be careful what we vow and what we what we say all right our vows this is why jesus was so strong about it you know for by our words for well, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And this is talking about, you know, I know in the Bible it says, you know, in Christ there is no condemnation, all right? But, you know, um, if you've got the truth, all right, in you, okay, you're not going to start speaking, all right, uh, lies. God is going to correct you. The Holy Spirit will correct you. I know that with myself. You can't just speak words without the Holy Spirit correcting you. You know, if you're saying things and uh, the Holy Spirit is not correcting you, all right, then something's wrong, okay? Because the, <laughs> the truth, you know, the Bible says the truth it, it being in you, okay, he shall guide you and lead you and teach you all truth, all right? So if you're saying things that are cursing you, uh, and you're not getting convicted for it, then you really have to have a good look at uh, uh, what spirit you have there, all right? If you have the real Jesus or another Jesus, I'm just being honest, just throwing it out there because we, we cast this spirit out all the time and it's a religious spirit, okay? It's not the spirit of truth. And today's gospel is full of this spirit and other Jesus. I, I talk about it a lot because in these last days, it says even the most elect shall be deceived if it were possible. All right. So you accept the little leaven into your life, then what that does is it corrupts us. Okay. You know, and by by our words, thou shalt be justified. You know, uh, leaven is, uh, okay, words as well. By, by thy leaven, <laughs> thou shalt be condemned. You know, because leaven will condemn you. It'll pollute you and contaminate you, just like the yeast goes through a, um, a, a, a pile of dough and puffs it up. Okay, so Jesus condemns us. All right, Matthew 5. Again, you have heard that it was said to men of old, you shall not make false vows but you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord as a religious duty. Okay, so vows are very important. They were very powerful. Uh, 34, but I say unto you, okay, so Jesus is all the time, you know, when Jesus came to the Jews, uh, you know, the law of Moses said something, but then Jesus would come along and say, you have heard it said, but I say unto you, you know, Jesus is bringing in deeper and greater understanding. He's bringing in the new covenant, all right, new revelation, the truth, the kingdom. He's, he's revealing the kingdom, okay? But I say to you, do not make an oath at all, 
either by heaven for it is the throne of God or by earth for it is the footstool of his feet or by Jerusalem for it is the city of the great king nor shall you make an oath by your head for you are not able to make a single hair white or black but let your statement be yes yes or no no affirm yes or no anything more than that comes from the evil one all right so there in the picture you can sort of see where i put um yes crossed out no crossed out maybe <laughs> how many christians or people today are maybes you know um really <laughs> maybe it's sort of like it's sort of like lukewarm isn't it it's neither here nor there um maybe yeah all right so the law of vows okay so uh matthew 5 commentary the mosaic law was made the mosaic law made several prohibitions against swearing false the name of the lord okay leviticus 19 12 you shall not swear an oath falsely by my name so as to profane the name of your lord i am the lord okay and numbers 30 verse 2 then moses spoke to the teachers of the tribes of israel the israelites saying this is the thing which the lord has commanded if a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself with a pledge of abstinence, he shall not break, violate, profane his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So can you see here under the law, um, you know, how powerful our words are and our pledges and our vows are. All right. Um, all right, and uh, even here, uh, not swearing an oath falsely by his name. Deuteronomy 23, 21 also says, when you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it, for he will most certainly require it of you, and a delay would cause you to sin. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Um, but if you refrain from making a vow that would not be counted as sin in you all right okay so don't make a vow if you're not going to keep it all right 23 you shall be careful to perform that vow which passes your lips just as you made a voluntary vow to the lord your god just as you have promised with your word your own words mouth okay so um you know this is why backsliding is a bit of a um you know <laughs> a bad one all right because you know when we come to the lord you know uh we we make a vow you know it's how we get saved is making a vow to god um if you confess with your mouth jesus is lord and um you know you love promise to love the lord and that's do all these things but then you um don't do those things okay um you fall away don't you and uh the end is not good for that person um vows are something which if you're not going to keep your vow it's bet it's the word here says don't don't go there all right don't even make it's better not to make a vow all right than actually make one all right and there I've got here all the New Year's resolutions that people make, isn't it? I mean, the devil's just set everyone up with these New Year's resolutions. Most of them, you know, people never keep. And anyway, if they do try to keep it, people just try to keep it in their own strength. All right. But, you know, I would um, I'd be very careful. I wouldn't be making New Year's resolutions myself um, unless you are very determined and you add, um approval from god to keep those okay um because i'll mention later on uh jesus made a vow and um paul made uh, a vow so you know vow so um 
was not saying don't do it, but be careful how you do it. All right. And if you are going to do it, keep it. All right. Now, all right. So, yeah, all these New Year's resolutions, just we're just um, cursing ourselves, basically. We're just allowing the devil into our lives. All right. So, um, just, just allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. You know, if you've got addiction problems, okay, you know the addiction problems are, um, you know, something which the Lord uh, wants to heal and deliver you from. So the, the, the best vow you can make is just say, Lord, I just trust you with this. Uh, and But then if you make that vow of trusting him, then you've got to keep it. Because if you don't trust the Lord, then you're in, you're in serious in a serious place so um it's an area which you, we're all going to need to have wisdom because like i said don't say it, it doesn't mean it and you're gonna not gonna keep it all right because the devil's gonna come and use it as a snare against you okay and you're gonna have to give an account for it because remember we we just read you 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 have to you got we're all going to be um you know, have to give an account for every idle word. But, uh, you know, just need to ask forgiveness, cover it with the blood of Jesus. And, um, yeah, God will, God will uh, undo the Lord to overturn vows uh, by his grace. Okay, so let your yes be yes and your no be no. Im impropriety. Uh, failure to observe standards of honesty or modesty improper behavior or character okay so matthew 5 all right so we just go back to matthew 5 uh, uh, oops sorry okay so Matthew 5, all right, it says here, um, talking about um, Jesus here saying, let your state be yes, yes, or no, no, affirm, yes, no, anything more. Okay, so this is what was going on. The reason Jesus said this, all right, was because anyone who swore by God's name meant that they were telling the truth. So the Jews were, you know, they used God's name. It was the absolute, you know, there was no question of it. Right? Okay, so the Jews knew this and devised some tactful little ways of avoiding the consequences of breaking the law by improvising and substituting God's name with other such things like swearing upon heaven earth jerusalem and even upon their heads this was aimed at avoiding impropriety okay okay which was a uh, failure to observe so they were really trying to you know sidestep the curse of the law you know uh but jesus saw right through it all uh by swearing any of the above these were still swearing by God, i.e. heaven equals the throne, you know, God's throne. Uh, earth equals his footstool. Jerusalem equals God's holy city. Head is his creation, um, you know. So uh, this is why Jesus condemned it as hypocrisy and forbids anyone swearing, any swearing of oaths in ordinary conversation. Here we understand why swearing an oath is unnecessary. A word must be truth. If the truth is in us, all right, to swear anything else, Jesus tells us is the evil one. All right, admitting that Satan, in fact, rules our lives. So if you're not, if you're just uh, using your words casually and you're not keeping your words, it's it, what Jesus is saying is, uh, we'll go back to that one. I'll go back to, um, uh, hang on. Okay. Uh, anything else is from the evil one. All right. I'll come to that. 
Yeah, here we go. Matthew 537. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Affirm yes or no. Anything more than that comes from Satan. Okay, so it's a big wake up call, isn't it? All right, to swear anything else, Jesus tells us it's from the evil one. Admitting that Satan, in fact, rules our lives. You know, by, Jesus said, you know, by, you shall know a tree by its fruit. You know, what sort of fruit are we bearing? If we're, we're bearing false uh, statements and swearing upon this or that, okay, that's, uh, that's from the evil one, all right? Uh, so to swear an oath is unnecessary. A yes should be yes and a no, no. Should be no. Christians are not to lie. To lie is from the evil one, all right? So um, there we go, and I'm just putting that picture there. Question, what then is God's answer to over 3,000 promises for you? Answer, yes and amen. I mean, look, God, God's made covenant with us, okay? You know, we've, we've joined him in covenant, all right, when we get saved, okay? So God has given us and made us heirs and, and heirs of the promise of all his promises now when god makes an oath or a promise man it's yes and amen how awesome is that when you understand that um god's god's not a liar the bible says god is not a liar what he says is the truth do we believe it all right are we believing his promises are for you well yes they are if you're a blood wash covenant believer all those promises you inherit them straight away and how do you receive them by faith so what are we believing yes and amen all right so we need to understand that our words also you see you no longer are your own you've been bought with a price you do, don't belong to you okay you belong to god all right you are now all right yoked with christ seated with him in heavenly places and the holy spirit now through you is guiding and leading you so if you're going off and saying all this other stuff the truth is not in us all right it's not in us we've got another spirit there and that's where um, that other scripture comes in in second corinthians 7 verse 1 and 2 cleansing ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit that's why the deliverance is, uh, that's, that scripture is all about deliverance, cleansing yourself of all uncleanliness of the spirit. So if anything in you is going, you know, swearing falsely and um, elaborating and saying things that are not by faith and breaking promises and saying you're going to do things and don't do them and swearing upon heaven and earth and even your children, how many people do you hear swear upon their children's lives? I mean, wow, what do you reckon the devil's going to do with that one? If you've done that, swear upon your children, man, you need to break that quick. You just curse kids, right? You know, most of the time, this stuff, we're cursing ourselves, but, um, and the devil's going to get a legal right. I mean, God's grace is amazing, I'll tell you, but if we keep doing this, we make ourselves a liar because the truth is not in us, okay? All right. Anything else is from the evil one. So if we keep establishing the evil one's uh, confession in our lives, what do you reckon the fruit's going to be? Not going to look good. Okay. Be rotten to the core. Okay. Okay. Our words justify or condemn us. All right. So Psalm 141, a Psalm of David. Lord, I call upon you hurry to me listen to my voice when i call to you let my prayer be counted as instant for you the lift of my hands as evening as the evening offering set a guard o lord over my mouth keep watch over the door of my lips to keep me from speaking thoughtlessly okay there you go Four, verse four, do not incline my heart to consent to or tolerate any evil thing. You see, 
or to practice deeds of wickedness with men who plan to do evil. All right, so there we go about, you know, fellowship with um, ungodly people will just bring forth, okay, evil, all right? Um, and to watch over the door of our lips to keep me from speaking thoughtlessly, okay? Um, how often do we speak thoughtlessly? Uh, especially especially when we're in the company of ungodly people and have fellowship you're not fellowship but there you're there to representing christ you're there for a reason all right you've got to go equipped in the full armor okay because if you don't this stuff's going to start coming out your mouth all right and it says uh all right uh with men who plan to do evil and let me not eat of their delicacies, uh, be tempted by their gain. Uh, let the righteous thoughtful strike correct me. Okay, so let the righteous thoughtfully, okay, strike correct me. It is a kindness done to encourage my spiritual maturity. All right, so the Holy Spirit here, um is going to correct us okay all right and the righteous man as well and fellowship you know that's why it's so important to have fellowship come in and have fellowship because you know there's elders you've got elders and you've got people that have spiritual maturity who recognize this stuff i mean i know when i first got saved and i got baptized in the holy spirit I, all i could remember i didn't know what was going on but all i could remember if you asked me about that was these elders or mature Christians constantly saying to me, don't say that. No, no, we just cancel those words, you know, because they could see what <laughs> the fruit of my lips were, man. It was just uh, from the evil one, all right? And it's what the Holy Spirit does is it corrects us, all right? Hey, the fruit Pete. of our lips has to be good. It is a kindness done to encourage my spiritual maturity it is the choicest anointing oil on the head let my head not refuse to accept and acknowledge and learn from it for still my prayer is against their wicked deeds their wicked godless okay their judges are thrown down the sides of the rocky cliff and they who followed them will hear my words for they are pleasant, pleasant, okay? As when the one plows and breaks open the ground and the soil scatters behind him, our bones have been scattered at the mouth of Sheol by the injustices of the wicked. You know, this is what, um, um, you know, the, the gates of hell are doing, you know, the gates of hell prevailing against the righteous. You know, this is what, condemns us as our words our vows um saying anything other than yes or no and keeping our word all right being accountable it's all about accountability all right so there in the picture you've got their um, um you know some bloke just corrupting them and they're even just not even um edifying the hearer okay Hey Peter, All can right, you hear me? A, yeah. Can you pray, dude? Your connection's really bad. Can you pray real quick so we can all agree? Father, we just right now, Lord, loose uh, right now, Father God, your word to cut this any anything that would bind or inhibit this connection right now. We this with the blood of Jesus right now. And we ask, Father God, for your word to be loosed uh, in Jesus' name and clarity in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Okay. So making a vow, Ecclesiastics 5, 4 to 6. When you make a vow or pledge to God, do not put off paying it. For God takes no pleasure in fools who thoughtlessly mock him, okay, pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than you should uh, vow and not pay. 
Do not allow your speech to cause you to sin. And do not say before the messenger, priest, that was the priest of God, that it was a mistake. Why should it be angry because of your voice, all right, your words, and destroy the work of your hands? Okay, so this is a reason why a lot of people, okay, are uh, um, uh, abiding in uh, a place called Lodabar, place of destruction, okay, place of lack, poverty, all right, is because they're words, all right. Uh, it's better not to vow than to break them. And if you make a vow, you must, you must fulfill it. All right, because uh, like we said, every idle word will be kept made accountable for it. And you know, the devil's there listening to us and watching us and waiting, you know, to, for us to slip up. Um, but having said that, there is grace, okay, but we need to be accountable. We need to, like I said before, you don't attack this up from a humanistic religious way the holy spirit is the, the spirit of truth. will guide you and lead you in all truth if you're speaking this stuff god will convict you for it all right he won't condemn you there's no condemnation he will convict you and he will bring correction all right deuteronomy 23 verse 21 when you make a vow to the lord your god you shall not deny to pay it for he will most certainly require it of you and a delay would cause you to sin. Wow. Uh, if you refrain from making a vow, that would not be sin in you. All right. So it won't be counted as sin in you. You shall be careful to perform that vow which passes your lips, just as you have a voluntary vow to the Lord your God, just as you have promised with our words now. Okay, so while I was reading that, I just was thinking about um, Samson, you know. You know, he was a Nazarite. He made all those Nazarite vows to God. Okay, and you know something? He broke them all. He broke them all. And what happened to him? You know, he broke all his vows. And the last one he broke, all right, was um, putting the razor to his head, which allowed, he gave up. Uh, he confided with the enemy and he uh, broke his vow all right and um, he was blinded and he was actually when you read about that whole story uh, you know he's taken captive by the Philistines after Delilah had finished with him so you know his his, his uh, flesh had come in all right he was he made um, he'd broken all his vows and he was blinded the Philistines came in and blinded his eyes. And then he was put in a prison. He was literally imprisoned by being put on a, on a, in a mill, grinding uh, wheat in on a millstone with a millstone, basically pushing this millstone round and round. Okay, so he was literally blinded and spiritually he was put in a prison. And that's what happens when we make vows. We can see that as a type and shadow with Samson. Read the story. Okay. Um, it's very powerful and these these are this is the consequence of us breaking our vows okay and our vows to god you know unfaithfulness you know are we faithful to god you know we're going to keep keep our word and follow him what's the first commandment love the lord thy god with all your heart mind strength and soul and the second is to love your neighbor as yourself you know as christians this is what we all we have to do is really is in order to fulfill the whole law is these two abide in these two scriptures um, and keep those uh, when we start making all sorts of other vows it's not it, it bible says it's better not to vow don't vow something that you're not going to keep don't say i'm going to definitely give up this cigarette blah blah I promise you know blah 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 all right whatever well if you don't do it guess what uh-oh all right, the devil's going to get hold of it and God's not going to be pleased because it lacks faith. Anything we do has to has to be by faith. So when we're making idle uh, promises, vows, and it's not backed up by faith, it's sin. 
All right, so uh, in the picture there it goes, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. All right, so, you know, we got to be accountable and we got to bring edification. And I, and I know with that, that comes from the Holy Spirit. You know, that's not human wisdom. That's through the Spirit of God. And that's where the Spirit of God will work in our lives if we are faithful and accountable. You know, everything that Jesus did, you know, when he walked the earth, he spoke the truth and he was accountable. He was faithful in everything. Uh, he walked in every area he walked in truth. Okay, and this is what this whole area is dealing with. This, this is just giving the door, the devil a door to access our lives if we, if we don't, all right, watch our words. Because by our words, we are justified, okay? All right, making a vow of faith. James 5. But above all, my fellow believers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. Let your eyes, let, sorry, let, but let your yes be a truthful yes and your no be a truthful no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Wow, there you go. 13, if anything among if anyone among you suffering, because this is all tied in, here we go with, with ministry of healing and deliverance. So if anyone among you suffering, sorry, is anyone among you suffering, Christian Mark, he must pray. Is anyone joyful? He is to sing praises to God. Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders spirit of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. In verse, Father, we just ask for that connection right now in the name of Jesus. We, Father, ask you to cover it with your precious blood right now in Jesus' name. Okay, verse 15. And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man believer can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is, a it is dynamic and can have tremendous power, all right? Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, with the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. And he prayed intensely for it not to rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three. Yeah, you go on there. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the land produced its crops as usual. Got a little bit of um, static coming from somewhere there. Uh, Lord, we just cover that with the blood of Jesus. Sounds like the devil's really hating this message. Father, we just bind Satan in Jesus' name. We bind every strong man right now. Lord, we bind the powers. Father, we come against witchcraft as well right now. And we cut that witchcraft off in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, we just ask, Father God, uh, for your angels right now to secure this uh, line in Jesus' name. All right. So in the picture there faith without works is dead all right so you know the prayer of and the prayer of faith will restore the one who's sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven you know um all of these um vows that we make and um that you know we renege on um they can bring sickness they can bring all sorts of torment and um uh, God will forgive us, but we need to repent. So, uh, 
Verse 12 is powerful, all right? Do not swear either by heaven or earth or with any other oath. Let your yes be a truthful yes and a no be a truthful no, okay? So you don't fall under judgment, okay? All right, making vows. The law of vows, all right? So numbers, the one spoke to the the tribes of Israel say, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself with a pledge of abstinence, he shall not break, violate, profane his word. He shall do according all that proceeds out of his mouth. All right. So Psalm 76 verse 11, make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. Let all who are around him bring gifts to him who is to be feared with awesome inspired reverence. And Psalm 61, 1 to 8. So I will sing praises to your name forever, paying my vows day by day. Okay. If you make vows, make sure you pay them. All right. Day by day. Um, Proverbs 18. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequence of their words. All right. Okay. So James 5, 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. All right. So this is just referring back to that scripture we read. Um, the original Greek meaning of the word prayer used in James 5.15 means a prayer to God or a vow. This is the only time the word prayer is used with this meaning. It leads me to believe there is this prayer. A vow of faith is a pledge or personal commitment to faith. When you pray the vow of faith prayer, prayer, you are saying, no matter what I think, hear, see, or feel, I will put my trust in God. Okay, so um, it's all right to make a vow, uh, but just be very sure you keep it, all right? So when we pray, we pray um, the word by faith. Like when we, when we pray for our brothers and sisters, healing or deliverance, okay, we are we must do it by faith okay um all right it's a it's a it's a vow of faith and it's a pledge all right it's our personal commitment to faith all right so james 4 17 therefore to him who knows do good and does not do it to him it is sin all right so there's it's no use you going off and praying for people if you don't have faith all right you need to have faith all right not to have faith is sin you know, sit there and watch and learn. And then when you're ready, step out. Step out and pray by faith. Okay. All right. If you must keep it. All right. Matthew 26, 62. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus. So here we see, just to give you a little bit of um, an understanding here. Jesus made. Um, Okay, a vow, all right? He agreed here, look, we'll just read it. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, have you no answer to give? What is it that these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. And the high priest said to him, I call on you to swear a binding oath by the living God that you tell us that you are the Christ, the son of God. Jesus said to him, you have, in fact, said it. But more than that, I tell you, regardless of what you do with me now, in future, you will see me revealed as the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. You mean Jesus knew the truth. He spoke the truth. Yeah. Okay. He declared a vow. All right. Because he knew he was going to keep it. You know, he was going to keep it because it had been already been done. It had been predestined, all right? He was God. He was the son of God. And he made that declaration 
because he knew that it was going to be all right revealed as sure as the sun would come up in the morning okay second corinthians all right verse 22 i don't know what chapter that is but moreover i call god as witness against my soul that to spare you i came no more to corinth not that we have dominion over your faith but our fellow workers for you, your joy for by faith you stand all right so um um here paul's making uh, a declaration all right moreover i call god as witness all right so he's calling god as a witness against my soul that to spare you i came no more to corinth okay and in galatians 120 now concerning the things which i write to you indeed before god i do not lie so he's 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 making a vow and an oath before god all right so paul made these uh jesus did too but you got to be make sure if you're going to say these things we keep our word okay keep our vow so if you make a vow you must keep it all right um so what i um you know so when we, we can make all kinds of ungodly vows all right when we make ungodly vows man that's that's a whole thing in itself um that's something which the devil really gonna get um hold us accountable for all right um and and something which we'll do another teaching we'll we'll go into part two of this vows teaching uh and we'll we'll um we'll learn more about um how these vows ungodly vows um what what are ungodly vows and more about these spiritual prisons which can bind areas of our soul and um take us captive all right and that's what isaiah 61 is all about you know jesus came to set the captives free all right and open the opening of the prison door to those that are bound all right what's that talking about that's talking about all right freedom all right that doesn't just happen today not only the day you got saved but it's a process okay cleansing yourself of all filthiness of the spirit and the flesh okay so um we can just now have a little bit of a discussion on anything any questions anybody wants to ask about that uh just i think that clarifies uh this whole area of making vows um you know about letting our yes be yes and our no be no if we say anything uh, uh as calling god as a witness you better make sure uh you're going to keep it because if you don't the enemy's going to take advantage of you amen praise god peter i had to cut your camera your uh your connection's so bad that's all right I, that's okay it helped a little bit praise god i asked johnny i was like dude are you guys downloading something what's going on over there <laughs> oh what's johnny doing with my connection man he's on my connection maybe that ah not... is he on youtube or something <laughs> i don't know what he's doing well, johnny what are you doing man <laughs> you're staying quiet uh, and, don't, and don't make a vow you can't keep all right yeah i'm not doing nothing i'm just listening <laughs> we're we're not just doing nothing which means <laughs> oh, you're oh, yes. yeah you're yes be yes and you know <laughs> yes, i'm just right. listening to the to your to speech He cut his camera too yeah i thought it was me at first <laughs> no. it's 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 lucky we have the end in australia isn't it might be uh yeah that's interesting hey ridge hey reggie original's back hey what's up family how you doing living like now just disconnected I got booted this morning in the healing room, and I thought I shut the whole room down. And Bridge is like, "No, they're still on." 
<laughs> we figured you just left us, Chet. <laughs> I, got, I got booted. <laughs> I was like, I told Reggie, I said, oh, Reggie, man, I think I done shut down the whole meeting. Well, um, about the teaching. So, okay, if we, if somebody takes a vow and, uh, you know, the Lord convicts them. So how do we deal with that is the question. And uh, also for vows, um, there's a lot of people out there that think they could sell their soul. What would you say to that, Peter? Can you sell your soul? Yeah, you can sell anything you like. Um, you know, your words have power. So if you want to sell your soul, yeah, the devil's going to be standing first in line to receive it, okay? And what can, was you the next repent, can you repent from that? Uh, definitely, you can. But like I say, if you're going to repent and you're going to make a declaration and an oath to God, you better make sure you keep it, okay? Because God's going to look at your heart. You know, if, if, you're, if you're going to say something, and you're not prepared to follow it through. And, and the, the Lord's just reminding me of that scripture, you know, where Jesus says, you know, talking about the kingdom of God, you know, it's like a builder. First of all, a man sits down, a man who's going to build a house, he first sits down and counts the cost, doesn't he? All right. So what we need to do is sit down and count the cost. Okay, before you make your vow or, you know, before you make that declaration, because if you say something and then you don't do it, it's actually worse. So, all right, you say somebody sold their soul to the devil and then they suddenly get tormented and they go, yikes, I don't like this. I want out and they make a vow, but they haven't really considered what they're going to do in order to, com to complete that vow. And then they backslide on it again, it's worse. And you see that. So, uh, but there is forgiveness. Okay, God is faithful now. God's not mocked. One thing I know with the Lord, he looks at our heart. He knows us. He knows uh, how accountable and how faithful we are and how trustworthy we are. Okay, so it, it's, a, it's a heart issue. Where's your heart? Okay, is your heart, have you really given your heart to the Lord? Or is your heart still in self? Where's your heart? Is it self focused or is it Christ focused? All right, is it all about love? Love is denying yourself and taking up your cross and following Him. So, where is your heart? First of all, I would probably sit down and think about this carefully and say, how much. Do I love the Lord? Am I prepared to lay down my life? You know, and that's what, that's where the scripture Jesus was talking about. You know, first a man has to consider, you know, what's involved with building a house. He's got to, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be um, a price to pay. All right. So are you prepared to pay that price? Because the consequences of, of backsliding again, there again, remember what the scripture said, it's better not to make a vow than to um, make one, all right? It's better to keep your mouth shut until you're ready and then make it, amen? Amen. Hey, your internet's perfect now that you're not teaching. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so how does somebody overturn? Now, how would okay, you, you gotta, Well, I've spoken with Peter Whippen about this. We've taken people through deliverance, and Pete always says, uh, you know, ask the Father to overturn it. So, you know, that's I'm not a problem with that. I just say, Lord. We just, first of all, you know, it's, it's a two-way street. We have to renounce it, confess, ask for forgiveness, and then we, we can overturn it with the blood of Jesus. And we ask the Father, in the name of Jesus, to overturn it. You covered all the bases, all right? Does that answer the question? Anyone else want to yes, elaborate on that? Because, uh, you yeah. know, praise God. Next question. Anybody else got a question, guys? 
we are live on YouTube. <laughs> so anybody, spe anybody speaking will be on YouTube. Just a warning. Don't be shy. Does that, does anybody, has that brought priority to anyone here from hearing that message? Do they now, now, do, does anybody want to just elaborate on that? Um, you know, how it's brought greater meaning to, you know, like, you know, how many people do you know that are always making false promises? No one? No one know anyone that does that? No? Hey, Peter. Me. Hey, Peter. I used to. <laughs> Very quiet there. I thought, wow, yeah. Jesus well, must Peter, be coming back soon for his glorious church. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Peter, I tell you what, I, I feel convicted on that because sometimes, you know, I need to think myself of using, a, I say, making a wise choice in the words that I make, you know, especially promises. And especially like that, what you tell about, you know, uh, making promises to God, you know, I mean, it's a heavy consequence right there, you know, itself. And I thank you for that. I really do, because you know what, uh, I need to come before him and ask him to forgive me. And, you know, I just never know, but you know, you're right, you know, come to him and ask Jesus, you know, to return that by the blood. I mean, we do have to watch and be careful what we speak, you know, as, as, you know and it's, as much as I say it to tell people, it seems like I forget to hear it myself, you know, that my tongue has life, it has death, it has blessings, and it has curses. And it seems like it bypasses me, but, you know, I always tell someone else, and I think I need to take that plank out of my eye. But I just want to say uh, thank you for that teaching. Thank you. Amen. Hey, Thanks, Raymond. Thank you. Thank the Holy Spirit. All right. It was all him. Uh, but one thing I just want to say about this breaking the vows, one thing we know is this is very powerful. Okay. Because. Okay. <laughs> um, one thing I know, or we know when we get, when we take people through deliverance, um, and we'll, for instance, if somebody's getting delivered from an evil spirit, or maybe they've got a sickness or something that might have brought the Holy Spirit might have said, well, they need to renounce such and such. Okay, when you take the person through the renunciation for whatever it is, the demons all the time try to bind the person's mouth shut. All right, so they can't talk. All right, because they don't want you to undo those words so this is the power of renunciation and forgiveness okay breaking that pact and that oath and that vow because what you've done is you've made a vow to the devil all right you've made a vow and a pact with satan that's why it says anything else is from the evil one so you've got an agreement with the evil one. When we speak the word of God, we're making an agreement with Jesus and with God. When we make agreements and vows, we're not going to keep what we're doing is we're agreeing with Satan. And we're, we are, all right, in an actual fact, um, obeying um, Satan. And that's why Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. Because their devil, their father was the devil because they were constantly... Um, speaking um you know in the traditions of men and uh leaven and um lies all right so they have pact with right. satan so if if you wanted to do a deliverance if you, all right it would be very important for them to repent ask forgiveness and you know the demons would have probably shut their mouths up so they can't talk and we, we see it all the time uh literally the demons do not want you undo that because that's the only that's going to mean okay is that agreement about that pact you make okay amen so that's how powerful amen. they are man so we get it all the time all the time we see it constantly where the demons will just go no no and then the, what the demons will do is they won't go down they won't let the person come up to confess and sometimes we're going to battle to get the demons down 
in order to get the person to come, the, the person in their right mind to come up and confess uh, and renounce that pact and that oath and that vow, whatever it be. All right. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Peter. Hey, Pete, there's a sister with a question. Yeah. Slata. Come on, girl. You know who you are. Hello, Peter. I have two questions to ask. If I can. Uh, yeah. Hi. Sorry, because I actually made the wrong vow, false vow, as you remember, and I have so many problems with that. And I have two personal questions. First, if the person, for example, took a Nazaretic vow and then he would want to cancel it, do I do it as an Old Testament or do I just say it with my mouth and just to... Yeah, Amen. just with your heart. Everything's by the heart, but it's very important that you there's true repentance, okay? So first of all is with your heart, okay, you, you repent, okay? So you, you've got that agreement in yourself that no, that was the wrong thing to say. I'm going to, I want to go, I want to undo that. So then your confession is... Um, you just come before the Lord and say, Lord, I just ask in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, I renounce and ask forgiveness for every ungodly word, vow, pact, oath I spoke. Uh, I cover it with the blood of Jesus. I break this agreement in Jesus' name, and I ask you, Lord, to overturn it, that it be not held uh, on record against me in jesus name and i thank you lord i believe by faith because it's all by faith i now believe lord that i am forgiven and uh the record is clean that satan has nothing again can hold nothing against me in from this day forth in jesus name amen all right or time forth whatever so it, it's really like a it's really like a legal statement when you when you look at it so it, it unbinds you because what these words do is they bind you to the enemy. They bind you to that curse, all right, whatever it is, okay? Okay, we're not under the curse, right? But you can put yourself under a curse quite easily. You know, you can, God, God doesn't, you know, you're still saved. What I want you to, people are probably asking questions in the mind. You're still saved, okay? You're still saved. Okay, but if you keep doing this stuff, it's dangerous, man. It can cause you to backslide. Uh, all of the stuff, making agreements with the devil is not good. It's not faith. Uh, it's actually working with the devil. You're working with the devil to, um, you know, um, destroy you. Rich, literally, the, the, the devil's come to kill, steal, and destroy. He uses all different tactics, all the snare of the devil. The snare is he will set traps for us, okay, to um, um, bind us uh, through our words. You know, by your words, you are justified, and by your words, you are condemned. I mean, uh, Christians can't just go around saying whatever they like. You can't do that. I mean, you know, there's grace there and there is grace and God will, you know, through our Christian walk. I know with my Christian walk, and I was saying this earlier, um, if I'd have had what we have now here 30 years ago, I wouldn't have made a lot of the mistakes I've made. I'm still here as a Christian and I've always been a Christian and I've just walked with the Lord, but I've made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. Okay. But God in his grace, has, he has still loved us and been with me. But there's areas there that he has waited for the right appointed time in order to show me. All right. And he showed me one a while ago. He showed me things all the time. I mean, the other day he showed me something. And before that, he showed me something. And man, you just get greater and greater freedom as we as we. We walk with the Lord. So this stuff is not, you know, sending you to hell, but it's designed to do that. All right. You're still saved, but you're just bringing a thorn in your flesh. You know, you're putting a, allowing the demon to come and torment you like Jesus. Paul had a, a messenger of Satan to buffet him because of the revelations he was getting. 
similar sort of thing. You're going to get a, you keep saying these declarations like, all right, I'll give you an example, a certain sister. Uh, I made a confession where I let, but basically uh, allow her demon to attack me by saying the wrong thing. And uh, it was only when I undid that, um, that yoki, bang, I got set free from it. And it was instant, man, I'm telling you. But didn't I didn't lose my salvation, but <laughs> I was living in a, uh, I didn't put it this way, I lost my peace. I wasn't walking in that um, peace of God and I was being tormented. I was still saved. I still was a blood washed covenant Christian. I wasn't under the curse, but the demons were having a go at me because they had a right, they'd open, I'd open a door. All right. Okay. I just hope that sort of explains things because you know, we're not under the curse, but we, there can be a curse there. We're not under the curse. If the curse is broken in our lives through the blood of Jesus, but we have to confess it. We have to say, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that this curse, look, Christians might be having trouble with this, but I, you have a look at some Christians that are constantly battling with certain areas in their life. All right. Why is that? Why do you think that is? All right. Obviously, there's a curse there. And how do you break a curse? The Bible says we're not under the curse. No, we're not. We need to. We have the blood of Jesus there and it break it. So how did we get saved? We believe with our heart. We confess with our mouth. Same thing with breaking curse. We believe with our heart. We confess with our mouth by faith. That thing's just eradicated once and for all forever. You don't have to keep doing it. It's done. Um, this is where this whole doctrine, you know, in the church, they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater and basically assume that no Christians can probably have a curse over them. Well, after 30 years of doing deliverance, I can tell you Christians are loaded with curses. A lot of them, not all of them, it, you know, some Christians are absolutely perfect walking around like Jesus, walking on water and doing everything he did, you know. Well, you know <laughs> come on let's be real all right we're being sanctified Amen. constantly by the holy spirit he's cleansing us and that's why in that i keep coming back to i'm using that scripture at all but because i don't want christians to get it okay cleansing yourself of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit that's talking about to believers so how is you know how is filthiness of the flesh and the spirit going to be sitting there if we're not under the curse we're not under the curse it's broken but when we confess it we cleansed okay when we ask forgiveness we repent okay and this is what's missing in the church today is repentance and deliverance was repentance and deliverance go hand in hand and healing you know so um the more i walk with the lord the more i understand um the, the whole process of sanctification and salvation salvation isn't just the day you got saved it's the whole package it's from you getting born again right through to the day you check out of here amen did that did that uh answer your question sister yeah that's a really great answer thank you so much peter and amen to yeah. everyone Praise God. And the only reason I know that is uh, through the word and through experience, because God confirms his word. People get set free. You know, there's so much in the church today because there's no um, acknowledgement of these things. They think that, you know, if we ignore the devil, uh, he'll go away. And that's not the case. Sorry. <laughs> We don't, oh, don't talk about Satan. Don't give him any glory. No, we'll just bury our heads in the sand and he'll go away. We'll just talk about love, you know. And then when people are ready for deliverance, you know, because they built them up in the word so much, then they're ready to get delivered. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus, all right, walked into the synagogue. And what did he do? He didn't have Bible studies and lessons for people. He just cast their demons out and healed them whoever they were. And you know, demons do, 
demons inhibit and stop people from building up in the faith. Everyone's ready for deliverance as the Holy Spirit leads us, all right? The only reason people won't get deliverance is because they don't have faith, all right? Okay, and all they've got to do is repent for that and believe. And once they do that, bang, then they're ready for deliverance and they can hold their deliverance, all right? But uh, to try and think that people have to be spiritually mature in order to get deliverance is a false doctrine, all right? Amen. That's well said, Peter. Do you, Peter, do you have any other windows open besides Zoom? Uh, Check real quick. <laughs> you're, you're really skipping. Uh, we can hear, we uh, can hear you okay, window, I've got yeah, the windows can. of heaven. Uh -huh. actually, the, windows are uh, the windows of heaven are always open no one ever closed them um let me think hold it okay fair enough there's another question uh, maybe, I've got, maybe, I've got... <laughs> maybe you got what <laughs> um okay here's another question um I'm, try... excuse me. I'm just 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 a question myself why is everyone asking me these questions? <laughs> because you just gave the teaching. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Come on, we got plenty of people here that are, that are uh, anointed in this room uh, and qualified to give out and say, hey, look, anybody wants to jump in, uh, oh, we wow. know this is how the body works, okay? Because uh, we, we all come together and we give a more complete answer because there's stuff I, I'll miss that others will get. So. You're not feeling convicted, are you, Peter? <laughs> That's all. Yeah, I just don't want to be like, I don't want to be like, looked at like I'm something special, all right? I just want people to know that the body of Christ doesn't work like that, all right? The body of Christ works as a body. All right, that everyone in here is anointed by the Spirit, and the Spirit can give somebody that doesn't even know hardly the word revelation to yeah. un answer that question Amen. Uh, effectively. Amen. Yeah, this is an awesome teaching there. This is a good, good stuff. Amen. <clears throat> okay, let me read this other uh, question in the chat for anybody. Okay. <laughs> um, it says, where did it go? Uh, does sometimes the curse and the spirit have the same name? How to determine it? The curse does, does sometimes the curse and the spirit have the same name? How to determine it? It's on the table for anybody. Uh, uh well, the yeah, yeah, somebody else want to answer that and then I'll come in with my take. Father, oh, we just place? pray for revelation, Spirit, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Greg. Sorry, I was going to play the cricket app for you. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Here, Here um, let me let me answer that. Here, here, no, guys? okay. Well, just the, the question again was was is the curse and the demon having the same name? Is it, the, so Correct. Is the, so sometimes the curse and the spirit behind the curse have the same name. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. They're related, aren't they, Greg? You answer. Well, yeah. They obviously are. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned of the name of anything that's coming against us, other than we identify it. You know, if its name's Bob and I call it Robert, you know, then. <laughs> you know, it's neither here nor there. I want it out, whether I call it it or I don't know its name out um so it's yeah. it's really just a matter of identifying it rather than you know what is its correct name or whatever else you know if it's like, attached to it like like pete pete or pedro hey yeah yeah you know it's um so <laughs> look if, it, if there's a vow we've made then whatever's attached to the vow get off you know you know what names you want to go by and you know they'll change them every time it you know suits them anyway um, yeah so let's give it a little example there so people get a better understanding of that all right um anyone want to elaborate on that one well put it this way 
Okay, I've got one here. Uh, curse of poverty, all right? God showed me the curse of the lich, for instance, all right? Now, that's a scripture. It's in the Bible. It's a scripture. It's in um, Proverbs, and it's a curse. Now, in that curse, there's a whole pile of demons. It's not just there's, there's lack, all right? There's bankruptcy. There's poverty, all right? There's um, uh, sabotage. There's um, all sorts of demons working in there, all right? Uh, so demons work in gangs, but there's a strong man, all right? So the curse has a... Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Not very anointed then. Thank you, Jesus. There is a strong man associated with the gang, okay? It's hooked in with the curse, okay? So the curse brings a strong man, okay? So identify the curse and the strong man, okay? Amen. I agree. And I'll give you another example. Um, say it's a curse of destruction. You know, if you have a curse of destruction, now the Bible says Abaddon, Apollyon actually are the spirits of destruction. But uh, look, God's not a legalist. If you call out the curse of destruction, I mean, you can say I break the curse of destruction and anything enforcing that go right now in the name of Jesus. You don't have to have everything's name and line up. You know, you don't have to do that. You know, you spirit causing my stomach to hurt, go. You spirit making blah, blah, blah. You know, you spirit behind whatever, you know, take your whole family with you. Take and the infirmity you. and infirmity too, Tracy. Eh? Yeah, yeah, there you go. And yeah, yeah. it'll be a curse of infirmity, but mm. that infirmity depends on what you're struggling with. If you have bad eyesight, guess what? <laughs> you know, if you have the flu, it's infirmity. You can call it flu. I mean, it. you know, you don't. God's not a legalist, you know? That's right. That's all right. Exactly. So the Holy Spirit, I don't know. Look, I just know the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks to me with demons, generally, it's about function. All right? Function. Okay. Uh, he might give me, you know, yeah, even with Python, he might say to me, spiritual pride well i know that's leviathan you know what i mean so but he will another time say to me like um something like lilith he'll tell me lilith you know um whatever so but a lot of the time the holy spirit gives me the name by function all right like might be hatred of men you know okay my hatred of women my uh fear of rejection it might be abandonment you know whatever but then we know all right that uh all right we just break every curse of rejection in jesus name we break every curse of abandonment in jesus name amen so um identify the strong man and the curse will follow all right well the, either or amen. either follow amen so, yeah, um okay amen. This was kind of answered in the chat, but I'll throw it out there anyways. And after this, Bill has a question too. Um, in the chat, the question came up, Are do we have the authority and are we able, uh, we as a body of Christ, to pray for and uh, pray deliverance over somebody in authority over us? So in other words, like me as a woman, could I pray for an elder, uh, another elder woman, you know? No, I don't have a problem with that. Sounds good to me. Man, good to me, man. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Amen. Bill Tracy, has a Tracy, I just let you know out there, Tracy prayed for me this week. I asked Tracy for discernment on a certain area that I was battling with, and Tracy got a word from the Lord for me, and yeah, it was spot on. So there you go. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord will use us where we're at, won't he? Yeah. Praise God. Um, you know, we got to we got to remember there are passages saying, you know, don't take authority over this and that. Now, when you're praying with a group, it's a little bit different. Like there's safety in this group. You know, if Peter being an elder wanted prayer, we could all pray for him. Not a problem if he submits for prayer. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I'd probably be better if elders prayed with elders, but it just doesn't always work like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so not only God. that, the Holy Spirit could lead it all. He could change it all. You could you could you could be having a, a younger uh, believer come to pray for an elder, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit say, no 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 no, get that kid over here who's a new believer and bring him over here. Because I've seen it happen where like my, my the Lord will tell me call Angel, call Ben, you know, get him over here right now. And then my kids were like, what? I wanted to play. No, nope. the Lord said, do this right now. And then they, that person would get healed because we, we followed what the Holy Spirit was leading. How old yeah. are those kids, Reggie? Like 10, 11, 12. You know, I've seen it many times That's with awesome. my children. And I, and I just want to elaborate a little bit on this. I, I, look, um, one thing I've seen time and time and time again is Christians uh, growing in the Lord, then getting uh, ahead of themselves and getting special revelation that no one else, not in the elder of God after 30 years, but they've been elevated by the Lord to such a point where they don't need to pray with any other elders because they've got um, divine privilege and um, superiority in the spirit and they are they're allowed to make an executive decision all on their own all right and then they'll go off and run with it and and they've been given uh, a new what is it a new season or something like that and they haven't checked it out with the, the elders in the church all right so if you've got anything please i'm, I'm not i'm 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 just warning people. I see it time and time and time again, all right, with division. You're getting certain revelation, you think, and you're just so sure of it, you go to the elders and you pray about it. Because one thing I've seen with these people, they don't submit to authority. They don't. They won't. Because it's called pride, and it's also hooked in with religious spirits, all right? And that's not how the body of work, Christ works, okay? It's, and that's why we've got so many different denominations all over the world and why we've got so much division, okay? Amen? Sad but true, uh, brother. And the room uh, just went very quiet. <laughs> no, Bill, <laughs> Bill has a question. Go ahead, Bill. Praise God for you. Okay, I wanted to ask about the passage that you... Uh, spoke about a couple times there, the one saying, you know, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And I've had, yeah. I've had people kind of throw that back in my face and say, well, you know, if you say yes, then you can't change your mind. Or if you say no, you can't change your mind. And, you know, I struggle with how to deal with people. You know, it, it seems to me that they're kind of misapplying that, you know, scripture to their, you know, agenda. And, um, I just wanted to know your thoughts on, you know, exactly what that's talking about there and, and how to deal with people, you know, that, you know, that try to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, you know, like for instance, in a court of law, if you go in court, uh, you're not to swear on anything, but just you know what i did when i went to court a while ago i i made an affirmation i said uh yes i promise to tell the truth you know basically yet yeah, my yes will be yes and i affirm that my yes will be yes and my no will be no now i'm still held accountable for that okay so if i say yes and it's a lie then i'm accountable but i'm not going to swear upon god all right uh um that's what the Bible speaks against is swearing upon God. Uh, it's you don't need to do that. That's unnecessary. Christians, all Christians have to do is uh, let their yes be yes. Because what was happening, if you, if uh, it was in the second frame, I'll just read this out because uh, Jesus sort of clarified this. So if you, when you understand a little bit of the history here, um, I'll go back to it. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I've just had right, different situations where, you know, 
you know, maybe somebody said, you know, well, you said you were going to do this. And because of whatever certain circumstances, you know, things change and, you know. Well, you, yeah, it, well, you're accountable. If you said, yes, I'm going to do this and you didn't do it, then, uh, you know, we're accountable. We're accountable by our words. Uh, that's what Jesus was talking here. The reason Jesus said this is was because the, the Jews were finding reasons to sort of avoid coming under judgment by swearing upon heaven and earth and Jerusalem and their heads uh, without directly swearing upon God's name because what they wanted to do is avoid impropriety. And impropriety means failure to observe standards of honesty, modesty, um, and improper behavior of character. Uh, that's why Jesus addressed that. Basically, he's saying, um, you know, if you say something and don't do it, then God's not going to be very impressed because it's a, it relates on our character. It does. And it's a bad, it creates a stumbling block to other people. Like, you know, um, if you're saying, if you make a, say you're going to do something and you don't do it, then it, it, becomes a stumbling block to your brother or sister doesn't it i'm talking about things like well okay i said we were going to meet for dinner and you know because of certain circumstances it didn't happen you know kind of more super superficial things like that you know and then people will try to use that verse you know in that well what you do is you're not if you're going to be late for dinner then you know it's if you can you'd let them know you know just say hey I'm, I'm gonna be late for dinner and let them know but if you didn't say anything then um it would it would um you know people are not gonna understand that eh? but like i say if you're always late for dinner uh then you realize you <laughs> yeah you know obviously you're condemned by that aren't you because people will say oh bill He's always late. But if Bill's late one night, because he had a, always on time. He had a, yeah, because Bill had a flat tire one night, then Bill would everyone would understand it. But if yeah, Bill Bill if they if they invite Bill round for dinner at seven o'clock and they know he's gonna turn up at eight, that ain't good. Yeah, they know me, that's not gonna happen. That's why I you know I get frustrated <laughs> with somebody will quote that passage of scripture, you know, I yeah. think thought about a context and, you know, and while I'm asking a question, I'll ask yeah. a second one. You also mentioned the passage about, you know, Jesus went to set the captives free and a lot of people will, you know, kind of debate about that, like what happened, um, you know, as far as what he did when he was um, in the tomb and just wondered how you think about that. yeah what when he was what when he um at what, what what point you mean when he went down below the earth and preached the gospel to the captives correct well, yeah yeah well that's what he did there was it like a, a holding place for the dead wasn't there a holding place and he went down and preached to the captives and uh, you know um abraham's bosom basically and they were he went down and preached to the captives and uh then he rose from the dead and led captivity captive i mean he he literally overcame death and hades and set the set the captives free but he does that on a on a level with us spiritually as well as far as in deliverance if our souls are held captive in any way spiritually while we're alive uh, then uh, you know now with being born again we go directly to heaven now don't we so that's my understanding amen you know that word preach actually uh if you take it back to the original definition it means proclaim so he basically mm. you know went and said hey look i told you i'm lord i have the keys now look <laughs> You know, so I don't think he was sitting there giving a Bible lesson to the people that were, you know, basically going to hell, but uh, more or less proclaiming his righteousness. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm.
So many people rose from the dead, didn't they, with that? They were walking around. Uh, you know, they got rose from the grave, literally saints and people were walking around, resurrected from the grave. So it's not, there's not a lot written about it and there's a lot of different doctrines on it. And I don't want to form a doctrine in any way, shape or form other than what it says. So you've just got to be very careful we don't get ourselves into false doctrines. All I know is that Jesus, um, he um, led captivity captive. He took the keys of death and hell of sa Satan. And now uh, when man is dies, he has access to uh, heaven uh, because Jesus's blood is now sprinkled on the mercy seat. You know, we're, we're now able to enter boldly. And when we die, we're to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we just got to read it as the word to, and believe it. So, uh, yeah, but there is a place there, um, which was like a hopping place, wasn't there, that we read about with um, um, Lazarus, you know. Yeah, that's really cool. When he died, he went to uh, Abraham's bosom is what it was called. And we know yeah. from, you know, where, where he talks about the rich man and Lazarus dying, we know that they could see each other, they could communicate, but they could not get to each other. Because the rich man, yeah, yeah, the rich man basically went to the bad side where Abraham was in paradise is what they called it. And remember, yeah, he was saying, he, yeah, he was saying, Father Abraham, you know, send somebody that they can just give me a, a drop for my mouth is so dry and then send somebody to preach to my brothers. And isn't it interesting that he knew he was there. He never argued why he was there. It was justified. He knew and he knew what had to be done to not get there. You know, uh, while we're on the subject really quick, uh, isn't it interesting that he said, send somebody to preach to my brothers basically so they don't end up here. So I think that's interesting. Yeah. Um, even the people that die and uh, without the Lord, they know it's just, it's justified. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus, when he was on the cross, said to the other thief, he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Eh? So today, he said, today, like, you know, not, not later, today, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so. Amen. So there you go. That's what, like I say, I don't want to form any doctrines over it. Just read it, believe it. And that's it. Don't don't want to get sort of like contentious over it all. All I know is to be absent from the body now is to be present with the Lord. When you die, you're going to see Jesus. You're going to be with the Lord. And uh, that's why we don't fear death because death doesn't have any hold on us. All right. We overcome, but you know, you know how we overcome, but, uh, it, it says we love not our lives unto death is because for that reason we're not our own we've been bought and Jesus uh, Jesus owns us we're his property man that's why I think we've got to be very careful of what we say as well when we understand and I sort of hit on that when the teaching where we're not our own so what right have we got to say something all right, that's not in line with what the word says. You know, what right have we got? If we do, we're in, we're up, up, we're from the evil one. You see, because this whole doctrine of self that's crept into the church, it's very hard to differentiate between, you know, our will and the Lord's will, uh, because you know, um, um, self is has got to die so you know the more we get transformed through the washing of the word and the more we understand the more we understand that uh about losing our life you know so our words are very powerful when we understand that you know our our words have to line up with his will be done not ours because what did jesus did did jesus you know, Jesus said, but not my will be done, but yours, Lord. So anything other than the Lord's will, I mean, in our lives uh, is sin. Um, but having said that, 
if you make a vow and you don't keep it, whose will is that? That's sort of like the devil's will. Because the devil doesn't want you to keep your vows and words, does he? He wants you to renege on them. So then you come under judgment. Because that's what demons do. They love bringing Christians under judgment on the curse. That's how they operate. They operate the strength, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the curse. So if they can get you, okay, under judgment, um, then having said that, we're not under the curse. So there's no reason why you should even go there. All right. You've just got to confess your sin straight away. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Uh, renounce them. And this is where renounce, this is where forgiveness is sadly lacking today. You know, every morning you get up, you need to just repent and say, Lord, I just ask forgiveness for all my sins. That covers you. Bang. And if the Holy Spirit's got something, if there's something there that the enemy sort of like, You've said, you just ask the Holy Spirit to show you, Lord, is there anything that you want to show me that I've said or done that needs to be corrected? Anything vows I've made that I've broken? Like, you know, with pornography, let's take for pornography, for instance. How many people say, oh, I'm going to give up pornography. I'm not going to watch any pornography this week. And then next thing you know, two days later, computer goes on or something else happens, jump in the car, go somewhere they shouldn't. Um, what's going <laughs> to, what's going to transpire then? Three days later, condemnation. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 Christians could say, oh, I'm not under the curse. I'm free. I can do whatever I like. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Come on. Let's be honest now. I think they, I mean, that is called greasy grace. You know, where you think you can just go and do what the hell you like because you're covered by grace. Guess what? You got a false doctrine. Because the Bible <laughs> says there is no blood covering for willful sin. All right. Now you've been told, we've all been told about our vows. Now we all understand we've all got knowledge. Now we, we might all come under us. You know, the Bible says a teacher comes under the judgment. Ducking and weaving. You're cutting out, Pete. <laughs> Sorry, sure man. You don't I'm have ducking. Any... I'm waiting. Hey, are you are you sure you don't have any other windows open? Look, is there only Zoom open? Shed doors open. Uh, <laughs> that, is, that is weird. I know what it is. It's bad weather. I think it's the bad weather. We've got some bad weather coming in. There's a bit of a cyclone coming. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's sunspots actually. Bless Tracy's little IT heart. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> Press cat. Diana. Okay, we have uh, another. Tracy. Hey? Have you got your new computer yet, Tracy? It was supposed to be here today. It did not arrive unless it arrived when I uh, am here. Uh, and that's, if that's so, uh, I pray. Pray it's in one piece. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It might be your computer. It might be that old computer. No, I've asked. I private messaged a few people. I'm like, is Peter breaking up or is it is it just me? Yeah. So okay. yeah, I asked a couple people. Anyway, um, back hey, the questions back to everyone else. All right. Well, we have another question. Okay. Um, okay. If you have been prayed deliverance. If you have uh, been prayed for deliverance, why are you still attacked is the question. Well, I'm not going to answer that because I'm going to let someone else answer it. Greg knows the answer. It's a war. It's not a battle. It's a war. 
No, it's 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 true. We don't we haven't we haven't we haven't won against them yet. Um, and as 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 one gets you know as the Lord brings up, we take him down. The difference is is being is being um, beaten up in the attack or taken it to the enemy. I mean, Israel was attacked and they're all cowering, but David went out and took out Goliath. Then everyone got up and took out all the rest of them. But it wasn't the, it wasn't the last battle they fought against these people. So it's the same for us, you know. They, 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 they will find ways to try and attack or whatever else. It's not something we need to be intimidated about. It's we get up and go, come here then if you want to fight. You want to pick a fight? Come here then. The truth is, and we and we and we hit them with the weapons. We got buckets of them. We got the name of the Lord. The truth is, too, the truth is too, Greg. Is since they're totally defeated and disarmed, and we have, you know, fifty weapons in Scripture that we can use. That we can is actually, all? we can actually make a public spectacle. You know, we can actually, we can beat them. We should be beating them so bad that we make them look ashamed. You know, that we shame them. You know, so, you know, it takes it takes a while for a, a believer to get that good at, you know, self-deliverance and spiritual warfare. But, yeah, that's definitely nothing to be intimidated of. Mm. So are you, know, you guys saying that it takes more than one deliverance session for me to be free? Is that what you guys are saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, watch, yeah. watch, Reg, watch Reggie's, Reggie's, Reggie's self-deliverance videos. Yeah. What what's Reggie doing deliverance that is happening there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still get deliverance. Been a Christian four years. Um, I was actually doing deliverance in the streets today. About the fourth one, I was calling things out of this guy, and I had to take a break. And I was getting massive deliverance, and I had to jump back in to his deliverance. So it happens. You know, the Lord purges you as you bear fruit. Uh, I'm a branch. When the sap when the sap starts to flow through the branch, ooh, the power of God comes. Things things that that jump on us leave. You know, it's mm -hmm. ongoing. Yeah. Can I just also mention here? Um, all right. Uh, none of us here are perfect in every shape, way. Well, Paul said, uh, "I run the race." Uh, not that I have already attained, you know, he, he doesn't look back either, but he, he hasn't already attained, you know, he, even Paul, he was still, uh, you know, with the Jews, but he ran the race, and what we're doing, all of us, is we're coming into a closer relationship with obedience, to Christ in every area of our life. So th there's areas of our life where we need to repent that we haven't repented for. There's idols in your heart that you go, you, God knows that you're not ready to give up yet. You're not able to. Uh, and that goes back to Exodus 23. This is a good example of it. Exec ex Exodus 23, where the Lord said to the Israelites, you know, Joshua and them, you can't, if I gave you the land uh, in one day, you wouldn't be able to hold it. You wouldn't be able to overcome. Your enemies would overcome you. So what the Lord does is he, he slowly, we by faith in obedience and trust, take back the Lord, the, the land day by day as we're able to keep it. Because if we can't keep it, the, the enemy would overrun us. All right, so that's Exodus 23. I think it's about verse 28, isn't it? Somewhere in Exodus 23. Does somebody want to read that? Exodus, so you're thinking of uh, Exodus 23, Genesis, Exodus, about, okay, hang on, I'll look at it, Peter. Um, another illustration, I guess, from Scripture, and this is what I, I would like to stress to people, is that we're not aiming to get deliverance to go, oh, isn't life all cruisy as now? Because we weren't called to be on that cruise ship. You can tell us about that, Tracy. Um, but, but we're called to war. And um, so it's not like, oh, let's get rid of all the demons and then we can just sort of relax. It's like we get rid of what's up front and then and move on to the next battle. Um, an illustration from the, sorry, 23, you said, wasn't it, Peter? Yeah, it's Exodus 23. And 28. Down, sorry, Exodus 23, verse... Uh, so read from, uh, uh, okay, read, 
uh, all right, down from about 25. All right. Uh, I actually read from 27. <clears throat> I will send my terror ahead of you and I'll, I'll, I'll throw into confusion all the people among you, people among whom you come. I will make all your enemies turn their backs on you in flight. I will send hornets ahead of you, which will shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite. I will not drive them out before you in a single year so that the land does not come become desolate due to lack of attention. And the wild animals of the field do not become too numerous for you. I will drive them out before you little by little until you have increased and you are and strong enough to take possession of the land. Does that cover it? Yeah. Yep. You see so, that? Yeah. That's type and shadow of deliverance. Anyone listening to that? Okay, so um, and it, what it is, man, all those Hebites and Hittites and Hezites and whatever they're all demon gangs okay they are principalities of demons all right probably another illustration was the, the hebrew people at peor right they balak brought in this guy balaam to curse them and he couldn't god said you will not curse them i've blessed them and they were sitting there and it was they were just but no one could touch them so then they tried another strategy and they put what was the people? I don't know. But anyway, they put their Moabite, Moabite, Moabite women. women. That's right. They put they put the you know hot looking women, you know, just set up a set up a cafe across the road. Well, you know, something of that ilk across the road and it started enticing people. So they they looked for another way to get in under their skin. So they, they couldn't attack you, overwhelm them because the Lord blessed them. So they enticed them away, which was just another form of attack. And in the end, it was was taken out with a javelin after 24,000 died because they did stupid things. But, but, um, but yeah, it's, you know, is Satan want to take us out? Yes, you know, and we, if we get a good thing from the Lord, does he want us to corruptly use it? Yes, he does, you know. Um, do we corruptly use it? Only if you're, only if you're foolish. Thank you. Jesus. Amen. Does I think that answer that person's question? Does that person's question, are, are you satisfied with that? I'm trying to find that out. Um, they didn't want to speak because we're still live. Uh, they, they also, there's a lot of background noise, guys. I don't know where that's coming from. Come on, co host. <laughs> um, that's that's uh, your cafe. Well, how come I can hear it in my stereo? <laughs> okay. Yeah, there is some noise in the background here, but I could hear it coming yeah. over. Okay. Uh, I could hear dishes. I could hear dishes. Dishes. Okay, strong man. Then another question was about the strong man. So, okay, if you're in the military and a, uh, <clears throat> a commander, you're in battle and a commander or a general dies, what happens? What happens after they die? Somebody else, the next say that person. Again. Okay, if, if you're in battle, say, say no. your, side, your side's on battle and so is mine, okay? and you kill one of the uh, commanding officers or the generals in the army, what, what happens after that? Oh, they got another one come in, usually. Uh, they, there's more than one strong man. You've got lots of strong men. Like, you know, all those Hevites, Hittites, Pezites, and uh, Parasites, uh, <laughs> they all, they're all demon gangs, okay? So they're Nephilim type um, origins. Now they all have a strong man all right so you might have a strong man over like suicide which is death you know so you got all these death suicide another one come in uh, sexual immorality and it'll come in it'll be the queen of heaven working with jezebel delilah um and um uh, incubus, succubus, so the strong man over them will be there. And then you, you're going to have another one come in, all right, under another um, particular one, which might be um, trauma. And trauma might have a spirit of fear attached to it, terror, crippler, and all that. So there's a strong man hooked in with that demon gang. So once you take one demon tribe out, like the Hiss Hittites, the Amorites, They've got a strong man over them, you know, bang, you take them out. Then there's another tribe will come at you. Sort of like those video games almost, you know, some of those video games, Satan comes up with these, you know, you, you know, you, you make it through one section, you know, oh, 
you've just completed section two and then you walk into a new area and then there's another big principality looking at you, you know, with a big club and a spear and fire coming out of his mouth, whatever, and you, you know. So that's how it works. Every area of your life has a strong man, depending on what your uh, weaknesses are. Might be out. You're breaking up really bad, Pete. Oh, bad. Sorry. Well, Sorry, we rebuilt that thing in Jesus' name. I think it's weather here. I know what it is the weather. It's raining outside and there's a cyclone coming. Praise so, God. Um, all, right. all right. So now, look, you've got Jezebel. Like the other day, we went to kick. Jezebel out of a sister and the first thing the Lord said to me was go after Ahab so I went after Ahab bang Ahab manifested big time and then the Lord said to me death's hooked in with Ahab uh went after then we we left Ahab and went after death there was a whole principality the Lord wanted to kick out concerning death so all right Amen. Yeah, that, that about covered it, I believe. Uh, she's happy, I believe. If not, then she better, she better tell me God. quickly. We love, we love happy people. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. Hey, uh, Pete, I got to cut this in, in a few minutes. Um, your meeting's Monday, right? Yeah, that'll be the last one for the year, apparently. Are you going to invite people? Yes, everyone's invited. and. Um, I don't want to make any vows about giving people plane tickets come free of charge or anything. <laughs> we'll just send I'd the love, ministry jet, okay? Yeah, I'd, love, I'd love you all to be there, but unfortunately we can't afford to uh, Let's send you. out um, yeah, all the, the, the travel plans for you. Let your yes be yes and your no be yes, no. Uh-oh. That's right. I'm not going to make any vows. Yeah, all right, but you, yeah, you just turn up. Praise and let God. Your, and let your private uh, jet Monday, be in my hands. Yeah, Monday night, 7 o'clock, Southport at um, uh, Young Street, opposite the library in Southport there, uh, the CWA Hall. Uh, there at 7 o'clock, you'll be safe. And, uh, so, so yeah, free admission. Should I fill in the gaps there? Yeah. yeah, can you say what he was saying? He's breaking yes, up. Really Monday bad. night, seven o'clock. You can actually get there at six thirty. Um, Twenty-five Young Street, Southport, on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. That's Queensland time, by the way. I can translate the time for the rest of the world, but you know, just catch a plane. <laughs> and there is no private jet, by the way. It's hey, 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 what are you talking about, Greg? I need you to gas it up. You can pick us all up this week. Yeah, no, not a problem. Uh, yeah. All the <laughs> state, yeah. No well, seventy-five million dollar jets in this ministry. <laughs> yeah, we want that jet. We want to borrow Kenneth Copeland's jet. Uh, He's got a fleet of them. Surely he can spare one for us. Okay, Pete. One. Yeah, sorry. One thing. One thing people can be assured of is if they make it down there, they will get prayer. Correct. Definitely, will get prayer. Anyone who asks shall receive. All right, praise God. Can somebody that's not oh, breaking up pray us out of here? I just make a vow. Did I make a vow just then? Uh oh. Yeah, but it's true. It's true. If they come, you'll pray for them. Praise God. All right, Lord, help me, Father. Help me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, be yes. Chat, you gonna pray us out? Does somebody else want to pray? I have a terrible internet connection. That's why I didn't speak up. I've been booted twice, so I was pray. You look all right. Go, Reggie. <laughs> all right. So, Father, I thank you for today's teaching. I thank you for Holy Spirit being here. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we thank you every day we're learning. We thank you for the YouTube channel. Lord, the technology. Lord God, uh, we just love you. We bless you. And we speak life over those listening on YouTube and here now. We speak uh, healing over them right now in the name of Jesus. 
And we also invite you to come to the meeting also and hang out with us. And uh, we love you. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 We agree. And uh, before I cut the live stream, uh, Keys to the Kingdom will be shut down for two Saturdays and then the last two, two Mondays of the month. But Reggie's room is open. And that's under uh, Reggie Soto's Bible study at Pete's website, okay? Saturday morning healing room. And Saturday morning healing room, praise God. And, Re and Greg will be in the room, won't he? Uh, I'll won't be he? hovering. I'll come and hover. So Greg will be hovering in the Zoom room on those appointed days, the Saturday and the Monday, Greg? Yeah, that shouldn't that shouldn't be well. It's actually a Tuesday for me, but it it, it shouldn't be a huge problem. Don't don't expect me to be there all day and all night, but um, but yeah, no, if, if I can, I will. You know, and um, we'll have a bit of fellowship if you want to be there. And um, if you don't, then I'll be offended, but I'll cope. Let your yes be. In. Hey, that was a vow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cope. All right, I'll cope. <laughs> Uh, I want to God. invite you guys also if you want to come over to uh, Witness Project on the 29th, it could do that. Oh, that's a that's that's a great day. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Amen. Yeah. So we'll just get with you on that if you guys want to do that. We can, uh, you know, we can at least praise the Lord and uh, pray about anything that's come up and and uh, do deliverance if we need to. But and no, no New Year resolutions. All right. I already did 